Okay, can we express the zero vector as a linear combination of these three vectors? Well, we can write that out just as we did uh, previously. Uh, we set the zero vector equal to a linear combination of the three vectors. And we see if we can solve for C1, C2, and C3. Writing out the coordinates of the V1, V2, V3 vectors. And then multiplying through by C1, C2, C3, we get this equation. And I've been a little inconsistent with my notation because I've been putting arrows over these vectors. Even though the uh, linear algebra text doesn't do that sort of thing. Whoop, big long vector. Okay. So we, again, multiply through by the C1, C2, C3, then add the three vectors to get this, and we see that we end up with three simultaneous equations and three unknowns. C1 minus C2 has to be zero. C2 plus C3 has to be zero. C1 plus 2, C2 plus 6, C3 has to be zero. So we get these three equations, which we translate to a matrix equation. And this is the form AX equals B. Your solution is X equals A inverse B, provided A is invertible. That is, if the, make, if the determinant of A is non-zero. Determinant of A is easy to calculate. I think it's 5. You get, what, 4 here, and you get um, 1 here, and you get 0 there. I think that's right. Uh, calculate it and see if I'm right. So, x equals a inverse b is the only solution to the equation, because if you have an inverse matrix, this is a unique solution. However, b in this case is the zero vector. It's ax equals b, but b is the zero vector. So a inverse b is the zero vector, so x has to be the zero vector. But x is c1, c2, c3 which means C1, C2, and C3 are all zero, so only the trivial solution exists. Only the trivial linear combination for C1, C2, and C3 are all zero will give you a zero vector. So, not possible to find a non-trivial solution. And the question was, is it possible to find a non-trivial solution? Okay. Um, We start with the matrix, and we tell, I tell you that the row space is the space spanned by the rows of the matrix. That is the span of the set of three vectors. You can reduce this set of vectors to the identity, meaning that if you were trying to find a linear combination that equals zero, if B1, B2, and B3 were zero, just like over here, that there would be only the trivial combination where C1, C2, C3 is zero. Okay? This matrix reduces to the identity. It's like this situation. The matrix is invertible. If you multiply the inverse of the matrix by the zero vector, you get the zero vector. So C1, C2, C3 would have to be zero. Um, Furthermore, a linear combination of the rows of this matrix and what you have here is a linear combination of the rows. What you have here is, um, well, okay, get a linear combination of the rows equal to this. Uh, that would be equal to any vector in R3 because for any vector over here, this tells you, since this matrix is invertible, that you can find a linear combination of the rows that equals that vector. Uh, this means that the set of vectors, set of row vectors, has dimension 3. Okay. You can't add three of them to get a zero vector. They're linearly independent. You have dimension three.
So if you have linear independent rows in a 3x3 three three or n by n matrix, means the matrix is invertible, and vice versa. If the matrix is invertible, you have linearly independent rows, and you have no non-trivial trivial linear combination equal to the zero vector. For the matrix we have here, the matrix fairly quickly reduces down to one where you do have a row of zeros. So this matrix is non-singular, this is non-invertible, and your, linear, your rows are not linearly independent. Uh, your third row could be regarded as linearly dependent on the first two. Um, the rank of a matrix is the number of independent rows. So the matrix we had over here has rank three, it has three independent rows. This matrix has only two linearly independent rows, it has rank two. Okay, back to less than this matrix. Uh, these rows span the same space as the rows of your reduced, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry, these are the rows of this matrix, not this matrix. Um, so these rows, this set, this set of the rows, set of the row vectors spans the same space as the set of vectors you got when you reduced the matrix. So this is a basis for what the, we call for the row space. Okay? This has the same span as this. There are only two vectors here. These two are linearly independent. So the rank of the matrix, number of linearly independent rows, is 2. Uh, so there it is. Uh, there's, there's much more that can be said, and I keep wanting to go over into uh, what the rank has to do with the four basic subspaces and, and, and transformations and so forth, and we, that comes in the next chapter. It's coming up soon, but it's not there yet. So this is laying a foundation for something really profound that I hope you're going to really like when you see it. Okay. Now there is, well, that's, yeah, that's it. We're gearing up for something really neat, uh, and we're just looking at rank of a matrix, and that's pretty much what you need to know. And of course, there are other things you'll find when you work through the web assign and read your text.